Hello everyone, Berserker here, and welcome to Medieval 2 Total War. Oh, you know it's an old Total War game when it starts with the actual name and not Total War, as the new Total War games like Total War Shogun 2, Total War Rome 2, and Total War Attila. This is how the old Total War games were. They were Rome Total War, Medieval 2 Total War, Empire Total War. But anyways, in my last video I mentioned that I'm starting a new series and that's gonna be a little bit different. And I guess that's uh, what it's gonna be because I generally wanted to do that because I've had multiple people, you know, ask me, uh, why don't you play the old Total War games? Why do you why do you always stick to the newest Total War game? That was the case with Rome 2 and it kind of started being the case with um, Attila as well. And apparently some people don't like Attila. I personally love the game, but there is not as much interest um, for Attila as there is about the other Total War games. So I decided to vary things up. Plus. Medieval 2 is um, my first Total War game and I have this nostalgia factor uh, for it that other people have for Rome because Rome 1 is usually most people's first Total War game, at least most people that I know. But uh, for me the case is Medieval 2, that's the first Total War game I, I ever played and that's the one that's like, I don't know, closest to my heart I guess, the closest to my heart. So. I guess, uh, yeah, we're gonna be playing some Britannia campaign because I decided to, you know, once again, vary things up. I, uh, back in the day, I did America's campaign and apparently a lot of people were interested in that. It's one of my most successful series, so why not do the Britannia campaign? And uh, I'm gonna be playing as Norway. And uh, I'm gonna be playing a short campaign, so hopefully I'm gonna be able to complete it. Oh, or at least, you know, somewhat complete it during this Let's Play. You know that I don't like making, like, 50 episodes. Try and keep things short. Playing on medium difficulty, I used to play this game on very hard, but I haven't played it in literally over half a year, if not more. So, you know, I'm not used to the mechanics anymore. But good thing is we're playing as the Vikings, uh, as the Norwegians, and okay, let's watch that. A land of emerald isles, a land of kings, a land of war. England. King Henry sits upon a hungry throne, thirsty for more land. The Norwegians, warriors happy to pay the blood price for their ambitions. Scotland, from the highlands and across the lowlands comes a spirited people ready for battle. Wales, a people of song and sword, and leaders that will bend their knees to no man. And Ireland, suspicious of his neighbors, the Irish warrior never sleeps, though he dreams of conquest. Britannia, one realm, five kings, total war. Oh, I, I miss those uh, cinematics in the older Total War games, especially Medieval 2. It had some really nice cinematics. I don't notice it as much when I play, but, you know, uh, when I actually go back and play one of those old games, I uh, realize that, you know, it actually it's actually something that used to be in the game, and, uh, you know, it's kind of nice. Okay, so, um, let's see here. I'm, I'm gonna need some time to get used to this whole thing. But yeah, uh, I wanted to say about the historical setting. I am not really familiar with this historical setting in general. Uh, let's see my faction. Uh, yeah, King Hacken. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't read much about him. Uh, I'm not really familiar with this historical period once again, but uh, it will be all right. Um, it, it seems like a very nice period though, because you have all the British factions fighting. You have the Norwegians that are kind of invading, doing their Viking thing. Although that's, uh, you know, after the Viking era. Uh, they're already Christianized and stuff like that, but they still have, you know, that little Viking in them, I guess. So, oh, well, that's going to be confusing. I'm so not used to that, but let's see what we, we've got here. So, we've got, uh, here's some territory on the very north of the map. We've got some isles here as well. Some territory, and are we actually at war with someone? Man, I'm, I, I, it's going to it's gonna take a little getting used to but let's see the diplomacy here currently i'm not at war with um, anyone but i guess i will be shortly uh, you know shortly 
Okay, so let's see here. Public order is pretty good overall. Um, I don't know how much my income is. So far, I'm actually losing money even though I'm not spending anything. So um, having the troops alone is, uh, you know, costing me a lot of money. But let's see here. So I have a castle here. I have a town here. Castle, town. Uh, that's fair enough. Two castles, three towns. Seems like a good idea. They're in different regions as well. So I'm not going to be converting anything at this point. Uh, gotta do something about public order here, uh, and we can't really do anything at the moment. Only thing we can build is land clearance, which is gonna only give me food production and I guess a little bit of money. Uh, food works differently in this game, obviously, it's, uh, you know, totally different. Uh, I have this one ship here that's kinda just hanging around, and I should dock it somewhere, I guess. I don't know if I need those ships. Longboats, that's cool, but I'm gonna disband them. Um... I'm gonna need this one though because um, I'm gonna be attacking this settlement soon. They have some Highlanders, some Highland archers, and uh, yeah, Highland rebel, which are basically peasants as well. So uh, yeah, let's see here. Let's see what we can recruit. This should be a castle. Yeah, modern bailey. So that means a castle. So we can upgrade the castle, which I think I'm gonna do. But that's all I'm gonna do for my castles right now because I need more income. I gotta secure. Uh, let's actually recruit some Viking Raiders. Also, recruitment works a lot differently. Uh, you know, once you recruit a few units, we're going to have to wait for the kind of unit pool to replenish a little bit. Uh, let's send my uh, my traders as well. Let's send them... Are there any exotic resources? I kind of knew the resources in, uh, in like the vanilla campaign in Medieval 2, but I'm not sure about those. I'm not sure what's going to make me a lot of money and what what isn't. Uh, that looks interesting. That's probably iron or something. So let's send him here. Oh, okay, let's see here. There you go. I'll take a few turns. And I guess I can send this um, other guy. Like this one here. I'm not sure. I haven't revealed this part of the map. So I'm not sure how much money it's going to cost me at this point. But let's see. Kirkwall here should be a fairly larger settlement. And I have a general here as well. And I want to move one of my generals as well. Uh, but... Let's see, I can actually build a few things here. I guess we're... Yeah, not a lot of buildings that are going to make me a bunch of money. But uh, I got communal farming here, which is quite nice. Uh, it's going to give me some boost to my money. Not going to be doing anything here. And in those settlements, uh, it's dirt roads. It's a great way to start building an, econo an economy early on. Uh, recruiting some troops here. But I'm, I'm going to have to move one of my characters. Um, so, let's see here. Where's my uh, faction here? I'm not sure. I want to I wanna see which settlements I have uh, generals in. I guess this is uh, the closest general that I have. And I guess I'll I'll get like a few troops from each of those settlements and try and attack here and siege it. Sieges don't take as much as they do in Attila. Let's see if I can actually build something here that's going to give me some money. Yeah, dirt roads. Totally building that. Dirt roads are a great way. They're cheap and they... They don't give you a lot of money, but I mean, they give you some income, so. And now I'm gonna have to keep some money in reserve because I'm gonna be losing money rapidly. Uh, so, let's end the turn. That was quite a, kind of a long term, but I guess uh, you'll have to get used to it because I'm, you know, really rusty when it comes to that game. Oh, reinforcements arrived. That's actually something that I really needed. Uh, so, our noble King Hacken has dispatched a Viking raiding party to aid in the Norwegian conquest of Britannia. This raiding party is currently in the North Minch Strait. I have no idea where that is. West of Wick, awaiting the command to strike Hebrides. Uh, in addition to these general reinforcements, King Hacken has also uh, seen fit to increase our king's purse. That's nice. So we're going to be getting some money. Uh, not sure. Why are they speaking with a Russian accent? That's kind of historically inaccurate. Uh, so where's Wick? So I can find this. Yeah, so west of Wick. So they should be coming from this way, I guess. My reinforcements. I have... Oh, these guys probably cost a lot of money. But yeah, I'm going to be losing some money at this point. Which is normal. Once again, trying to build some stuff as quickly as possible. Let's build the farms. Here. You can build a farm here, even though that's a castle. Still building the farm here. It's going to take a little bit more. See if I can recruit anything. I can only recruit those Highland pikemen, which are not going to be very useful in a siege battle, honestly. And uh, let's see if I can... No, can't recruit. Okay, I guess I can only recruit, like, decent troops in these parts. 
got some dismounted Huskarl, some Viking Raiders, which, as far as I can remember, are kind of a uh, cost-efficient unit. Because they're not great, but their income's pretty low. Uh, I mean, uh, their upkeep's pretty low, and they, they don't cost as much money to recruit. And they're kind of my specialty, like the specialty of my faction, just like Axemen and stuff. But I guess at this point I'm gonna concentrate on buildings. I, I don't have a mission yet as well, so I guess my first mission will be to conquer this settlement here since it's, uh, you know, it's a rebel settlement. So let's end the turn once again. Might be doing horribly at this point. I, I'm not. I'm not really sure. Uh, I don't need those guys at all. Yeah, that's my first mission. So target Sky, which is this settlement over here. Okay, no problem. Should be able to take that. Let's merge those ships together. I imagine they cost me a lot of money, but hey, that's fine. I actually have... Oh, there is where my army is. Okay. Forgot to check those. Uh, I should have another ship here. Unfortunately, it's empty, but I guess what I can do is just move it over here. So, can dump this army here. Let's see how many troops they have. Should be able to win in an open field battle. Uh, this army looks alright-ish. Uh, Norse archers, Norse archers. Let's move those guys. Can I? Can I not move them? Never mind. Uh, some Viking raiders and uh, semi axemen, which are a shock uh, two-handed axemen unit. Some dismounted huskarls, which ought to be pretty good as well. So it's gonna last for five turns. It's 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 a castle, but I'm not too keen on attacking right now. Right now, I'm totally fine with uh, with just waiting for five turns before taking it. My mission, 15 turns, plenty of time. I'm not worried about it at all. Let's build dirt roads here again. And, uh, yeah, managing stuff, like, now I realize how, how useful the, uh, the whole, like, provincial system it is, is in the, uh, newer Total War games. Definitely. Having to, like, manage your faction this way is definitely a little bit frustrating. Once again, I'm, I'm gonna get used to it. I've spent so many hours playing this game that I shouldn't be too horrible at it. But at this point, I can't really recruit a lot of good troops. I guess I can build some stables and stuff, but... I hope the king's gonna send me some reinforcements. I haven't played this campaign before, so I'm not exactly sure how it works. But I know there are titles and there are reinforcements and there are, like... Oh! So, Scotland is gonna wage war on me. I'm not too concerned about losing the settlement. It's a fairly small settlement. Honestly, public order is not great, but I can actually win this battle. Or at least the odds are... Well, they're army strength ratio, 2 to 3. So, these are the odds, 2 to 3. And, uh, of course, my uh, enemy's advantage, but that's gonna be the first battle. And I'm significantly better at, uh, like, medieval 2 battles than I am in, like, uh, Rome 2 and the Tela battles uh, Generally because they're more slow paced and I'm pretty bad at microing and I I don't know at least I used to be because I had a decent knowledge about the game also forgot about the uh, general speeches As well in this game, but yeah Just completely forgot about it. So let's see where the enemy is gonna be here and I'll have to rebind my uh, keys uh, Because right now I'm moving from uh, by using the cursor keys, I guess... Okay, I guess I'll do it in between episodes. Now I'm, I'm gonna be just fine. Uh, rotating with a mouse as well. So let's see, they're gonna be attacking from this side. And I guess this is a nice choke point that we can that we can hold. See what they have. Uh, can see at this point. Oh, wait. I gotta do something. Restrict camera. Yeah, not a huge fan of that. So let's see what they have. Here. These look like ordinary... Uh, Sergeant Spearman by the looks of it. They have some Highland, whatever they're called. Some more of those guys, but nothing too scary actually. And if I, if I'm able to bottleneck on my eyes, should be able to win this battle. Hopefully they're just gonna hang around here and uh, go this way. Let's see if I can uh, deploy my, my troops here. There you go. Why are they not deploying? Oh. Should I start the battle? No, it's the deployment phase. I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, so apparently they can deploy there, but not here, which is kind of weird. Not gonna lie. I guess uh, the AI doesn't like being bottlenecked as much as it does in the uh, in Total War Attila. But I guess we can hold the town center here. Gonna try and not get outflanked by, by all means possible. 
So let's see. I'm gonna see how they're gonna start advancing, and uh, I'm just gonna be defending this way, I guess. Just trying to not get outflanked and uh, try and fight the enemy face to face, I guess. Will be the best choice. Let me pull my archers here. Uh. Should I put Flaming Shot? Because I guess, uh, I think the way that works is Flaming Shot is like slower, but it does more damage. So it's uh, a lot different than it is in, you know, the uh, Dior Total, Total War games. It works differently, but it's useful. Because usually, like, Flaming Arrows are not that useful in Rome 2. In Attila, they, they kind of are, but in Rome 2, they, they really aren't. And I'm going to keep Fire at Will on here. So I can hopefully get some shots, especially on those Highlanders. They're really vulnerable to stuff like that. My guys are getting buggy here. Not sure what's going on. But let's see. If I counter charge, I guess I'm going to have a better chance here. Or will I? Skirmish mode as well. I don't need skirmish mode now. Uh, that's not skirmish. That's skirmish mode. So no forward will at this point because I can start shooting my own men in the back, which I certainly don't want. Uh, and they do have some archers, but that's gonna favor me more than it's gonna favor them. So, uh, I mean, not too worried about it. And they're kind of getting bottlenecked, so. Let's see if I can shoot their archers here. These are just Norse archers. No, they're actually peasant archers. And my units are dropping quickly than I, more quickly than I expected. So I guess I'm gonna be losing this uh, one particular battle. Uh, yeah. Well... Once again, I'm not too used to the battles. But I'm gonna retake it. It's a fairly small settlement. It's not a big loss, to be honest. And I'm gonna retake it in a few turns. Units work a lot differently as well. This thing boosts morale, as far as I can remember. Yeah, let's uh, just shoot their archers here. They're actually killing... Oh, they're not shooting those guys here. So I guess they're just shooting their own men. They're not shooting their own men, sorry. They're just shooting my archers. But yeah, some Highland Archers. Definitely better than my Peasant Archers. You can see they're dropping in numbers here. My X-Men are apparently not that great at defending. Uh, yeah. Should have known that. I thought I uh, turned Flaming Shot on. I didn't. Well, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. But yeah, we're going to be starting off with a defeat by the looks of it. Not being able to inflict too many casualties on those guys. Yeah. Even though I kind of got a bottleneck, but I guess we're going to inflict as many casualties as possible on those guys and, you know, just be, try and be a little bit annoying. That was out of nowhere from Scotland, uh, definitely, but I guess I should have expected it. And even then, it's literally impossible for me to do anything in this kind of scenario, so. I guess the best thing that I can do is just uh, protect my borders. Uh, like, my southern, southern borders, for the most part. These guys are not dropping at all. Oh, no, I actually started dropping them now. Nice. I would expect Highland Archers to do, like, really well against my Peasant Archers. Because Peasant Archers are, like, the shittiest unit in the game for the most part. And, uh, Scotland, as far as I know, they have some pretty nice Archers. So, I don't know why they're not, like, they haven't killed all of my guys by now. Yeah, my knowledge of the units is definitely rusty. At this point, plus I haven't played this campaign and there are a bunch of new units in there, so. Looks like a lot of my experience uh, with this game comes from uh, Stainless Steel, which has obviously different units. Let's see if I can rally my troops again here. See what I can do. But yeah, I'm going to be able to deal some uh, nice casualties to those guys as well. Not too worried about it. Definitely could have gone worse. My guys are now just holding and I doubt they're going to hold, but... I inflicted some casualties. It definitely looked pretty grim at the start, but now it's actually getting a little bit better. But yeah, apparently Viking Raider is not the best uh, defensive unit. I mean, as it should be. I mean, if you want to defend a settlement, you're better off having spearmen and stuff like that. So definitely don't blame the game for that. Uh, they're actually under fire now. Only half of our force remains. Oh, really? That's half of our force. Well... That's pretty much half of the enemy force as well. I mean, I've killed quite a few of them. Well, maybe not half of it, but close to it. And yeah, I'm not going to win this battle, but let's fast forward. Because it's pretty much the same thing. We're going to get some shots on those guys burning here. These guys are down to four men, but since they're in the town center, they're going to fight to the death. That's actually really nice. That's the enemy general dead here. 
And that's half the enemy force as well. Okay. I might stand a little chance. Or at least I did better than I expected. That's for sure. We're gonna keep exchanging volleys here. They're not gonna break. I mean, my guys are not gonna break either. Uh, yeah, since I mentioned the town center. Uh, they're not gonna break while in the, they're in the town center. But yeah, it's going better than I expected. This guy's like alone here. Oh, they started routing. They actually started routing. They actually started routing. For the moment, the fortune of what? Goes our way. Let us pray it remains as such. I survived this battle with literally 60 infantry troops. This is how significant losing your general is, as it should be. Wow, that's nice. I actually won the battle. Oh, wow. I definitely didn't see that coming. But let's try and kill more of those guys. Just chase them off the battlefield here and kill as many of them as possible. But yeah, that was a fail in Scotland's part, definitely. Because I only had three units in there. My general is uh, still alive. He's badly blooded here, as you can see. He's covered in blood and stuff. I might install, like, a blood mod, because blood in this game looks pretty horrendous. Not gonna lie about it. See if I can uh, melee charge him. Since my archer should be faster, should be able to inflict some casualties here. Just as many of them as I can kill, I'll take everything. I'm fast forwarding here as well, so not too concerned about it. But they actually broke. And they had, like, they were outnumbering me, like, 10 to 1 or something. Uh, if you don't count my archers. And I mean, archers are pretty easy to deal with, generally, so. Let's see those guys. Uh, are they getting close? Let's try and kill those spearmen here. They're down to 19 men. But yeah, Scotland's gonna pay for that. They're gonna pay for attacking me, definitely. And I'm not sure how many troops I killed during the route, but I guess it's decent enough. Actually, this game, I expected it to run like crap. Uh, because it's not very well optimized for, like, next-gen video cards, I guess, what you would consider. It ran much better, actually, on my old video card, even though this one's better. But it's just an old game, so it's, you know, doesn't have, like, multi-core threading and stuff like that. Uh, so, it's normal for it to not be very well optimized. But it's actually running well, so far. It's running pretty much... Uh, like as well as Rome 2, which is kind of weird since that's a much older game, but You know, I have everything maxed out and stuff like that. So Yeah, and it's not a too bad looking game. You know, it's uh Certainly for 2006. It, it doesn't look that bad. Okay, so let's uh, end this battle here Let's uh, just make it quick here because apparently if I don't move it's gonna stay at six times faster I'm not gonna be catching any of those guys. Let's just end the battle here. Average victory. Uh, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that. So I inflicted quite a few casualties. Actually, when you get troops during a route, you actually just capture them. You, you don't kill them, which is a different uh, mechanic once again in the older Total War games, especially in Medieval 2. So now I'm gonna be able to uh, choose what I'm gonna do with the captives. Uh, okay. All the Scottish accent. And they beg you to like do different things, which is pretty cool as well. I, I remember being like, I don't know, like six or seven years ago. I, I enjoyed that immensely, just listening to them. Like, just listen to that. <laughs> the Scottish accent just, just makes it... Uh, just makes it better. Ransom, uh, I mean, 200... Denarii or whatever the it's actually Florence the currency in this game. Oh, let's execute a mine here Oh, they're sieging my fort there as well Let's see. Let's see Scotland shouldn't be that difficult to deal with let's See how many ships they have here One well Pretty obvious what I'm gonna do here. No uh, naval battles in this game obviously since uh, uh, Like naval battles were introduced in what was it Empire? Let's see what this gives me. Public order bonus. And yeah, I get why that boosts the public order. This gives me public health bonus, which is a fairly nice thing in this game because you can have a disease outbreak just as you can in Attila for the most part. I have no idea why they why they speak with a Russian accent. I, I don't comprehend how they forgot to do like a separate voiceover for the Scandinavian factions because they... they I mean, Scandinavian languages are pretty far away from Russian, so, I mean, don't really get it. 
Okay. Uh, again, I want to keep some money in reserve. But I'm building quite a lot of stuff. So I want to get some information on Scotland because apparently they have quite a few troops. And I, I want to know if there's a way to like see all of my armies like I can in like Rome 2 and stuff. But I guess it's a little bit... Oh yeah, military forces. I was literally right on it. So let's see. Castle Town, I have quite a few troops here. Is it close to Scotland? Oh no, it's actually a, at a pretty bad location. So let's see how many troops we can get. Those catapults are gonna slow me down immensely, so I'd rather not do that. But here, Inverness is a pretty good target, although they have some armies here. Oh, it's a full stack, damn it. Two full stacks, wow. Um, I'm better off, I'm better off, you know, recruiting some troops here. Viking Raiders, once again, not great for defending, but that's the most, like, average unit I can have at this point, so, uh, I guess I should do that. I'm really scared of those two full stacks. I guess they're kind of crappy units, which just justifies it, but I don't know. This is the General's unit, alright. I kind of like the Scottish. I don't like being in war with them, but I guess I have to. This is, like, the worst place for a... A merchant, but I guess we're gonna have to deal with that. Is this, this guy trading here? Is there any? No, there isn't. So I was trying to get to the iron over here. He's gonna give me 64 floors per turn. And it's gonna start rising once I actually establish like a monopoly there. So, uh, yeah, I have, by the way, I have no idea how long this episode's gonna be. Hopefully, not too long, but I didn't set a timer this time. But. Let's keep building here. Uh, no, I'm not gonna spend. Oh, how much did it cost? 600. Totally up for that. Okay, hopefully, not gonna be. Okay, I'm still making some money, so it's fine. Oh, this guy is pretty loyal, which is nice. Having loyal generals is actually pretty cool in this game. So, let's see here. Public order is fine. I don't need public order buildings. Uh, here, I'm gonna need. Three turns until those guys surrender. I'm not very keen on attacking it once again. I have a fort here, just four units in there. Um, yeah, whatever. I don't care. Here, I can recruit a couple more uh, Viking Raiders, and that's gonna be pretty much all f that I can do this turn. Oh, those guys, they can totally attack me once again, but they only have three units surviving, so I doubt that's gonna happen. Uh, are these units gonna replenish over time, or do I gotta retrain them? I'm not sure, but I guess I gotta retrain them, and I can't do it in this settlement because I have no military buildings at all, so building a uh, garrison quarters would definitely help as well as a bower, uh, bower there as well, however you pronounce that. I've never been able to pronounce this word for some reason. It's not a very difficult word to pronounce, but yeah, I should be able to win this battle here, clear victory, as it should be. So we destroyed those guys, so they're attacking the settlement once again here. Okay. However, I'm gonna fight this battle in the next episode. The first five turns here uh, are done with. And uh, yeah, 100 and I actually have better odds in this battle. Well, I have 40 Viking Raiders here and I have quite a few archers that are gonna influence the enemy morale, so I guess that's fine. Plus, like a bunch of their troops should be archers as well. Uh, let me actually see their army. Can I? No, I can't do that. Okay, anyways, that's going to be it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Once again, multiple people have been asking me, like, play an old Total War game, do one of the older ones. There you go. That's, you know, can't be any better than that. It's the Britannia campaign, which generally is awesome. We're playing as one of the Scandinavian factions as well, so a little bit of Viking action in there as well. So, you know, should be cool enough, and I'm going to keep the series. This is going to be replacing my Danes campaign, which I'll probably do one final episode of and because i pretty much achieved my goal in this campaign so i see no point of continuing it so yeah that's gonna be it once again i hope you enjoyed it uh this series is gonna continue and i'll see you next time goodbye